welcome back to the Steampunk Desperado channel. I'm Vaughn Troidy and I am the Steampunk Desperado. This lovely lady next to me is my wife, Artist Holloway. Holloway, Mrs. D. And we are in part three of our Christmas Carol extravaganza. Last Christmas, we took upon ourselves a momentous task, which was to view as many versions of A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens as we could possibly find. Some were wonderful, some were awful. Part one, we did our favorites, our, fav our favorite versions. Part two, we did the worst versions, possibly good for hate watching or mocking or throwing popcorn <laughs> at the screen or that. And the last version, the last episode of this Christmas Carol thing we're doing, we wanted to talk about the best and worst, not, not so much the worst, but the best features of various different versions. Even if they weren't the best Christmas Carol adaptations, some of them had like the best Scrooge and so on. And we really, really want to bring that out because it was just something we didn't have time for when we're going through all these 18 different versions. <laughs> So, we're, this this is like this this is like the Oscars. Yes, it the is. The best portrayals this, yes, and, and of different characters yes. and, and other categories. And the, and the best hat that won't stay on your head. Yes, and mine keeps going back because I have a rather large head. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, so what we've got here is is our favorite characters in the different in the different adaptations, and very Victorian, which is our tie-in to steampunk. And the best Scrooge, we kind of both, we kind of had a little disagreement there. A small one. Yeah. Yeah, your he, favorite. He accepts that he's wrong. <laughs> um, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> um, I loved Alistair Sim in the 1951 version. He was really good. Yeah, I, I, I like Jersey Scott better in 1984. Um, but not the novel, the, the 1984 adaptation. Both Scrooges that were not too angry, which is a common problem with portrayals of Scrooge, and have them basically shouting at people and, and losing his losing his mind. No, Scrooge is a very cynical man. He's he doesn't even care. He's not. He's too apathetic. And I love how these both of these Scrooges kind of delivered the lines as a joke. Like maybe they should die and decrease the surplus population, which is one of my favorite lines from from uh, Christmas Carol. And they kind of deliver that as like ha ha, I'm so funny, rather than you know I'm really angry. Yeah. And I really want these people Absolutely. to die. No, he doesn't care. So, so Alistair Sim and George C. Scott for kind of tied. Um, for Scrooge for kind of tied. tied. I agree. No. Best Cratchit. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna surprise you. Yeah, yeah. Are you ready? Are you sitting down? Yeah. Oh, you don't have to. You can stand. Kermit the Frog. I thought his Cratchit was charming because he is beaten down. He is. Um, yeah. Poorly treated, treat, treated. Yeah, yeah. He's treated. And he's married to Miss Piggy, of course. Of course. Yeah. Duh. Um, and then Tiny, Tiny Tim um, was really awfully cute in that too. That so. little frog that the um, <laughs> the, I forget his name. He has a name. He, he used to appear in the Muppet Show a yes. lot, but I forget what it was. Um, I I liked Kermit. I thought he yes. was very very sweet and very charming. Now the next one was is the best Marley's ghost. And uh, that was Alec Guinness, and he was in um, in the Scrooge version from I believe 1971, mm -hmm. and he was he was a very flamboyant. He was ghost. squishy. Yeah, he kind of comes in with his <laughs> he's kind of doing a little dance like like the uh, chains or feather boa or something like that. <laughs> Never knew he had it in him. You know, Obi Wan Kenobi, he wouldn't know. And when Scrooge asks him to sit, he sits on thin air. Which is which is really awesome. Yes, he's a ghost. Of course, you can yes. do that. Very cute. Now we the ghosts of Christmas have to have to do them. Now, first of all, Christmas Past, best ghost of Christmas Past. We talked about this movie, and it's a kind of a mixed bag, but we did love it with Jim Carrey. Mm -hmm. It was animated, and so the best Christmas Past. It was voiced by Jim Carrey, as a lot of characters were. But the thing was, in the novel, in the novel, Christmas Past was kind of. This amalgam, almost something like cyberpunk, that mm -hmm. this the face was shifting from male to female, and and all these different, uh, amazing. I I hadn't remembered that that was in the book, mm -hmm. and that's the, exactly the way that they portray it's it. The truest. Yeah, the, the it yeah. looks male, looks female. The voice shifts and and changes around, and so 
That was great. Literally has the face of a flame. So yes, it's and the flame is kind of encompasses his, yeah. her, zur head. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was good. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I, I liked. I liked um, him, her. Best. Yes. Yeah. Right. Christmas present. Now, a Christmas present is a fun one because it's got. He's supposed to be fat and jolly. Not in every case was he actually fat and jolly, but the the favorite one was again the Muppets, and so. He scored again. Yeah, and this guy. This guy was one of these cases where it's not, where it's like a, a guy in a suit, kind of like Big Bird. And I uh, hope no you know, children are hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's nobody inside Big Bird. There's, there's actual Big Bird. <laughs> anyway, so the funny thing is he, he looks very cartoony because he's a suit. And he, he says my other favorite line, which is when he talks to Scrooge, he says, Come in and know me better, man, which is such a funny sounding line. That he actually repeats it a couple times. Did I say that already? <laughs> it's very. It is so know cute. It's, it's you know, again, as we said in the last episode, that the Muppets have a way of uh, recreating these classics and being true to them, but, but they, also kind of making fun they don't, without disrespect. Yeah, they know. they still love the source material. It's not like it's not venal. It's not. Exactly. It's not hateful. They, they are just, it's kind of a, a love, kind of like one of those roasts where they take a beloved comedian and talk about him, that kind of thing. The next is Christmas Future. Now, that was a, that was a difficult one because Christmas, Christmas yeah, Future yeah. doesn't speak, or at least shouldn't speak. Shouldn't. In some cases, Christmas Future did speak. In fact, we could go over the worst Christmas Futures. Oh, we futures. could. Oh, please. And they're and some all of them, bad. They're white. I mean, as far as Oh, they're, yeah, the they're white outfit. Yeah, because, yeah. Stop like, it. Or oh, short. Yeah. You know, yeah, or female. You know, I mean, in Christmas future really has no gender. I mean, seriously, it's it's, it's just it's just it's, death. It's, it's like, death. Basically. It's uh, the yeah. the Grim Reaper, Soul Reaper. Yeah. Well, so but. Jim Carrey had a really cool version in his animation. That was that was pretty pretty mm -hmm. spooky. The Muppets had a great one. Again, a guy in a suit, but it's the suit is like over his head, and so there's an it's, empty. Yeah. It's like empty place in his robe. Where there's nothing in there, and that that is rather spooky too. And again, Christmas future should be tall and imposing, not not height challenged, not a little person, <laughs> as as we saw in some of them. And Patrick Stewart version, not the best version, but it's an interesting one where the where the Christmas future had these two little glowing eyes in there, kind of like okay. kind of like from like the little the, characters from Star Wars. Yes. Yeah, the little sand the raiders sand or whatever people. they were. Yeah. The sand people. Yeah, exactly. And I like that as well. Now, as far as the best Tiny Tim, a uh, little boy from Scrooge the Musical, he was yes. fantastic. I should look up his name. He was beautiful. He was a cherub. And he had this this little this Gorgeous. little um, uh, haircut. This little um, oh, he had like little kind of, from like eight is enough that kind of nineteen eighties yeah. haircut. Very uh, yeah. tousled, sweet yeah. voice, and most importantly, which is also in some of our worst versions, Tiny Tim is like five foot seven. He was tiny. He was as tiny. he should have been. He was tiny, and he was and and he was charming, yes. little rosy cheeks, and he did oh. not look Asian. He, no, and you just you <laughs> wanted to feed him. Not to, you really not to be, no, you know, not to be, not to be too controversial here, but. But you know, it wants, you want to look that look like he was actually part, Bob Cratchit's yeah. son. Yeah. So, anyway, anyway. No, it, it it gives you this overwhelming urge to go make him something to eat. Yes, absolutely. And the best music. There were several that were musicals, and some were good, some were bad. The absolute best music, though. Scrooge the Musical. Yeah, and it's the only one that has has the uh, has a memorable song from yes. it. Uh, which is celebrating Scrooge's death. And the choreography was the choreography was great, and uh, they also it was a very much like if you remember the, the musical Oliver, which is a bit more popular than Scrooge was. The songs are very much like like that. It reminds you kind of like consider yourself at home that yes. kind of thing. Yes, it's exactly. that kind of music. Yeah. Same people, I'm sure. Yeah, and very good, very very fun. The best animated version. Now this we differ too. So if you if you exclude the Jim Carrey's, yeah, because it, his was kind of a, That's kind of in between. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of near, either so fish nor fowl. Yeah, they'd say. so this is truly yeah. animated, hand drawn. Right, and that was the Mr. Magoo version because well, not only did I remember it from my childhood, which is very cool, but just for such a short children's version, it was fairly faithful. Mm -hmm. 
and and the weird thing, the only weird thing they did was they sh they showed the Ghost of Christmas present before the Ghost of Christmas past. Yes. I have never seen anybody else do that. Yeah, was, Even though the the ghosts the were very good, yes, they were really good. The the Christmas past was kind of an androgynous with a flame on his her head as should be, and so that was pretty good. Funniest version was of course Scrooge. It's hilarious. Carol Kane. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, just Love. just fantastic. And it's not it's not really the Christmas Carol. It's about doing the Christmas Carol, and yet Bill Murray's a Scrooge analog. So it's one of the it's one of the, as the millennials will say it's meta. It's meta. And so it's about about doing the Christmas Carol as a TV special, which is ridiculous. I mean, they have hip hop in it. They have they have uh, mice. With mice. Yeah, and this these are this is this mouse I don't hate. I don't hate this mouse. <laughs> If you see the part two where we talk about some of the animations, I hated those mice. They were awful. They were unnecessary, and I wanted to stomp on them. Okay. Yes. Did. Yeah, they were just cartoons, so no, no, no animals were actually harmed. <laughs> <laughs> Best dancing. You know, I, don't, I, I know Arliss said that um, the dance numbers were great in the Scrooge musical, and I yes. agreed, but i got to say that the Kelsey Grammer version, which was not one of the good ones, they had a lot of dancing in there, and some of it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. yeah, I gotta say so. I I thought that you know Christmas present, who was black and thin. Okay. He, okay. And, and unlike unlike the usual, unlike the usual Christmas present, even though he was did a good good portrayal, but he had like it's kind of a music hall, one of those old uh, British music hall things where where everybody's. Singing these very very singable songs and so on, but very rockettes. Yeah, they just threw a lot at you. Yeah, they put a lot of uh, uh, sexy uh, Santa Santa girls on there, which well, seems they were rather tin soldiers. Yeah, sexy tin soldiers. Oh, that's right. They were yeah, they were in red. So I was thinking of Santa, <laughs> but obviously it wasn't. Uh, but yeah, for children. Yes, like. and uh, but it's British, so what do you expect? And I mean, definitely, you know, maybe a little bit earlier for 1834. I mean, I think that was more of a later 1800s thing, the music hall thing. So anyway, that's as our our recap of our third and final. You'll be very glad we're done. <laughs> a version of the uh, Christmas we're Carol back. retrospective of our 18 versions of the Christmas Carol, which you watched last Christmas, and so that you don't have to. And to, to tell you <laughs> tell you about all the best the worst ones to watch and not watch, and so. Uh, we're not going to give any ratings because these are all our these favorites, are just though. just favorites, so it doesn't really it doesn't really the gears don't really apply this time. So for now, thank you very much for watching the Steampunk Desperado channel. Please uh, go down below, give us comments, like and subscribe as always. And for now, this is Vaughn Troy, the Steampunk Desperado, and Arliss Holloway, Mrs. D, saying thanks for watching the Steampunk Desperado channel. Come back again soon where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary. Merry, Merry and Merry Christmas. Christmas.